Hello, everybody. How exciting is the news? Isn't it fabulous? You know, because intrepid viewers, we're not used to good news. But I'm sure we can adjust. It's about time. I think we'll see some very interesting things as these corrupt clowns implode in front of our very eyes in the next 12 months and so. It's so exciting. So I woke up in Australia tomorrow for you to see that the leader of the Oath Keepers and 10 others have been indicted by the FBI. And I just couldn't quite believe it. Check news sources. By the way, I want to thank Johnny from Tarot's Apprentice. Lord have all the mercies. He made this T-shirt for me. Thank you, Johnny. And if ever there was a day to wear it, yeah, finally. And they're charged with seditious conspiracy. These have become my two most favourite words in the English language. Seditious conspiracy. Now we're talking big guns because everyone's been saying, of course, for months, you know, what, what are all these trespass charges and, you know, misbehaviours and misdemeanours and miss, miss, miss. We're working our way up the food chain. These are big charges. So I'm going to have a look at him. What's his name? Stuart Rhodes. Just have a quick look at him. But I think there are broader questions, particularly what's the connection between here and the next, the really big guys. Oh, oh, it's a beautiful thing. Now, this guy, Stuart Rhodes, um, after the 2020 election, after encrypted messages with his, you know, six best friends, then he ended up spending $29,000 on ammunition, on night goggles and other equipment. He was allegedly, allegedly, um, but not so allegedly. I think they've got the actual goods. So he was allegedly planning with others and to have stockpiles of weapons around the capital for, you know, second wave insurrection risings and stuff. This is a big deal. So I want to know what we can expect from Stuart Rhodes. Oh, I can feel waves of tension leaving my body despite reading on Stuart Rhodes. It's like turning point, turning point. Okay, Stuart Rhodes, what's he going to do? What's he going to say? Anything juicy coming up here? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it was on the tip of my tongue just before it was to say his name is important. He, just by definition of being the first one where the charges have gone from these little things with six months or suspended sentences to the big guns, he is a portal. And um, that was what he signed up for with the universe, uh, ironically. So that's his outcome card, but I've got to get there first. So in the middle, by the way, he's got two kings, neither of them are him. In the centre was my Biden card, how, how to stop Biden becoming president was the goal, the central tenet of the whole Conspiracy, we can safely say, seeing it's on the charges. I love this. I love this. I love saying it's conspiracy against dear Joe. Okay. Now, it was all done in the dark. Yeah. This is the alliances and pacts that were done in the dark, right, who, who they trusted within their own networks to be on board and to deliver their part of the plan, et cetera, et cetera. Who's funding it? I'm glad you asked. 
the King of Pentacles. Now, I'll have to do some clarifiers on the King of Pentacles because I think this is the money ball, so to speak. It's, I think this is how they're going to tie him to, whether it's what Roger Stone or whoever, is the money. Where did he get the 29000 and everything else, right? So the key is in the money and he and they all were well-funded. And as I said, his outcome card, Wheel of Fortune, it's like this is his destiny too. You know, I'm sure with his hand on his heart he's convinced he is a patriot, um, but you can't argue with a rock, you know. So until he thinks differently, this is his destiny to play out. And this is the problem with being at the head of the greasy pole is the buck stops there. So the others can only gain by giving more information up about Stuart Rhodes. So, mm, yeah, let's see how brave and strong Stuart Rhodes turns out to be down the road. Now, I want to have a look. I said I'd do clarifiers, but I'm going to have a mini look on the funding and the connections with the funding. I just keep hearing Roger Stone, Roger Stone. I think the Oath Keepers were his bodyguards as well. He would have loved that as a carnival showman, you know, look, I've got these big muscly guys, you know, in Kevlar jackets and they're all for me, you know. Oh, he's such a wanker. God knows what Google Translate will do with that. Okay, the funding. Tell us about the funding. Funding, funding, funding. I'm so excited. I'm just so excited. Now. Well, the cards here that matter are the world, meaning a lot of money. The Ace of Swords, this is what, behind the scenes, the people who were charged with making And don't forget, this includes the inflatable Kimberly Guilfoyle, right? Don Jr.'s fiance. Right? Um, who bragged about how many millions she raised for it. <laughs> Queen of Wands, a woman getting caught up in the funding mess. <laughs> how hilarious. The Queen of Wands. Oh, the Queen of Wands with implants and collagen lips and cheek insertions and uplifts and God knows what. Okay. So they took the line, you can save America. Give us some money for, you know, this illegal, treacherous coup. But we're calling it a party, you know, just step on board. So they were pulling the patriotic card and being carried away here because, as you can see, I'm just so delirious. Ah. The Three of Swords, uh, I think they're going to really be unhappy with who caves and who tells what. This is dominoes now. You know th those world domino championships and you see them go around like... <laughs> I think it's going to be a race for people to give each other up and distance themselves, not surprisingly. Oh, I don't know. My secretary must have done it, you know, like, oh, I had no idea I gave $2 million to this, you know, whatever. But they're actually broken-hearted because I think this is not only going to be a link, but if it can be proved that they knew, knew that it was a seditious thing, they are seriously culpable. Right, so the money is a very big thing, not just idle curiosity. And as I said, the world card, I don't think it's so much international money per se as world meaning it's really big and expansive and it has tendrils going out in every direction. Oh, my God. Let's follow the money. Okay, so oh, no shortage of good news. 
I never thought I'd utter that sentence. So in other things, Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, all of the big tech platforms are being overhauled. And I think they're concentrating on that time between the election on the 20th of November and what they allowed on their platforms in regard to the insurrection. So even though there's issues that predate that, that's what they're focused on. And what did they do to stop it? And I think you'll find that's nothing. And so they're going to have a corporate leg smack. But we'll just watch that. I'm not going to read on it. Um, oh, briefly on Prince Andrew. Now, I've always maintained, because I don't read on him or any of the royals because I'm Irish, <laughs> hence the beret, but... I've always said, just as a commentator, um, they'll never get Andrew to testify because the royals won't give up one of their own. You never know. You never know. He's been stripped of his royal titles. Now, the monarchy didn't even do that when the king ran off with the American divorce. You know, this is a very big deal. He's not his royal highness anymore. Not that any of them should be royal anything, so I'm sorry, you know, just because you're born as a child of a reigning monarch, you know, this whole born to rule stuff sticks in my craw. I really can't bear it. So it doesn't matter what sort of out of control sociopath you are. If you're the first in line, you become the king. No, but I mean, they've got to stop ruling the world. I'm sorry. Okay. But I digress. Prince Andrew. Um, look, it's hard to serve a subpoena on someone who lives in a castle, isn't it really? He doesn't really live in a castle. I'm sure he just lives in an elaborate sort of house, but he'd have layers of security and all of that. But this is going to get very uncomfortable and they're actually threatening to subpoena his daughter, who's his alibi. This is big stuff. So he may have to testify. That is interesting to me. In the meantime, I read he has to sell his chalet in Switzerland. $32 million shallow. Oh, poor pet, you know. Anyway, now, oh, the biggest news. It's as big as the seditious conspiracy. Georgia is going hard on Trump's blatant attempts to get them to reverse the election results, right? They were blatant. We all heard the phone call and they obviously have a functioning judiciary in Georgia somewhere. And the thing is, will they be the first to indict the Yeti? Will they get in front of SDNY? Will they get in front of the DOJ for the thousands of other things? Will Georgia get there first? Will Georgia get there first? Will Georgia indict the Yeti? Georgia and out there yet really soon really soon <laughs> ah! oh my word oh my word look oh. maybe the universe has really taken a 180 on everything that's happening. Trump and Georgia gets the tower and the death card. And the eight of pentacles, this is his lawyers going, oh, God, gulp. And I would say a certain loss, in which case this bears out what Linda G has been saying for three or four years too. This is the beginning of the end in the sense she's always said it'll be proved that Trump's presidency was illegitimate and I think there's something about this case even though it's five years later that will, could be useful in some other case really important case so I needn't even talk about these cards viewers just drink them in and smile really so bless Georgia then Ohio we're not through with the good news where is it? Ah, uh, yes. So the Ohio Supreme Court voted four to three not to accept the new redistricting maps. They said no. 
Ohio. Oh, loving this, loving this. Now, redistricting, it used to be gerrymandering. I don't know if there's any difference. You know, we all know in any event it's code for how can we draw the electoral maps so we who aren't popular enough to rule in our own right can steal elections and continue to ignore, abuse and deny our own voters what's due to them anyway. You know, that's all they do. You know, making personal wealth instead of looking after their own constituents. And they want to keep doing that. That's what they do. Very hard work, you know, ripping off your own voters as well as everyone else's. So can't believe it. I won't wrap it on anymore. So much, so much excitement. I've got collabs coming up. Oh, oh, there's more, there's more, always there's more. Before I tell you about the collabs, um, I said in my last video, I saw a younger person coming through the Democratic ranks and I stress this wasn't to replace Biden in this electoral cycle per se or anything like that, but someone who's going to have the cut through, who can speak to young people who that's really important because if America's not going to become a banana republic, young people have to vote in big numbers and expect more of their politicians not just the hypocritical GOP and the corporate Dems. They need something bigger and better. So you guys have responded. And the suggestions, I'm going to keep a list um, of your suggestions. <clears throat> could be Stacey Abrams. Could be Eric Swalwell. Peter Buttigieg and Beto O'Rourke are the front runners. So any of those would be great. So. If the Dems are smart, they'd get them all out, talking in their districts and on national platforms, talking, 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 because they all can do that thing. You know, they all make crazy stuff seem like crazy stuff and offer a sensible path through it, right? which is what America needs. So they're all good candidates. But I'm not entirely convinced we've, we know this person yet. Could be a new fresh face that we're not quite so familiar with. But any of those could do it. So I'll keep the list running. And keep your eye out. I've got a collaboration with Hogarth, Lady G and Diane's Tarot coming up um, in the next, oh, tomorrow. So check Hogarth's channel for when that's on. And I'm on with Sheila Celtic Tarot and Linda G, a couple of, no, I think that's next week. So I'll let you know more specifically next week. So there's a couple of collabs coming up and they're always great fun. So go off and enjoy, lap it up, pat on the back time. It's morning here. I'm going to get champagne. I don't care. Bye. Ciao, ciao.